Hey guys, this is Austin Evans with Hot Hardware, and today I'm here with a review of the HTC Droid DNA for Verizon Wireless. With a 1080p screen, quad-core processor, and Android 4.1, let's take a look. The DNA brings along the familiar Verizon red and black color scheme, which gives a bit of pop to the design. The front is fairly clean with a single piece of glass with the Verizon logo up top and the capacitive Android keys below. Along the sides are red accents which give a bit of texture to the phone, and around back you'll see the DNA is entirely coated in a soft-touch plastic. Generally, these surfaces pick up dust and fingerprints easily, but it really wasn't a huge issue. At 9.7mm thick, it's on the chunkier side, but thanks to the heavily tapered edges, it feels like a much thinner phone in the hand. Here is where the 8MP camera is found, along with the speaker with Beats Audio branding. It's not particularly noteworthy, and in fact it's a bit too easy to cover with a single misplaced finger. Along the top, you'll see the 2.1MP front-facing camera and red speaker grill, and below are your capacitive back, home, and multitasking buttons. There's a notification LED hidden in the grill of the phone as well as on the back, which is a really useful feature. The rest of the ergonomics are less than spectacular, however. Unlike most smartphones, the volume rocker is over on the right side, and worse still, it's narrow and blends in. HTC has opted to load the top up with your micro SIM slot, sleep button, and headphone jack. Having the sleep button centered up top is awkward, as it forces you to hold the DNA differently compared to almost every other large phone out there. Finally, on bottom is your micro USB port, which is weirdly covered by a flap. Micro USB is plenty robust to handle being uncovered, so it's beyond me why HTC and Verizon chose to cover it up here. This wasn't cool on the Palm Pixie, and it definitely isn't cool for a flagship phone at the end of 2012. It is compatible with the Qi wireless charging standard, so your best bet is to buy a wireless charger and ignore the fiddly little micro USB port altogether. The screen on the other hand is absolutely fantastic. It's a 5 inch IPS panel with a resolution of 1920x1080, and with 440 pixels per inch, this absolutely destroys every other smartphone out there right now. Even when viewing the screen much closer than you ever would normally, there's still an incredible amount of detail. Not only is it high resolution, but it's also among the most vibrant screens I've ever seen with top-notch viewing angles. I have zero complaints at all here, it's noticeably better than any other phone screen, period. The Droid DNA is running Android 4.1 Jelly Bean with the HTC Sense 4 Plus skin. I've never been a big fan of Sense, and this latest iteration doesn't do anything to change my mind. The overall UI design is very different than stock Android, and a lot seems to be changed for changes sake rather than making things faster or better. There's a lot of chrome all over the phone, which really doesn't hurt anything, but it's not as slick of a look as even TouchWiz on the Galaxy Note 2. On the whole of it, the DNA is certainly a fast phone thanks to the powerful internals in Android 4.1, but it's not as smooth as it could be with animations frequently losing frames. Most apps work just fine on the 1080p screen, although it is easy to spot graphics made for 720p or lower resolution devices. As with most recent Verizon phones, there's a notification for Wi-Fi which never goes away, which is a minor annoyance, and there's a good deal of bloatware install which gets its own category in the app drawer. Unwanted apps are fairly easy to hide, however, so it isn't a huge problem. Overall, the software could be better, but load up a custom launcher, hide the bloatware, and you're good to go. The 8MP camera is quite good overall. Saturation is solid, and there's a good amount of detail to work with. The white balance gets tripped up sometimes, but you can adjust it manually if you need. Low light performance is right on par with most smartphones, salvageable for a quick shot, but it pales in comparison to the Nokia Lumia 920. Video on the other hand really is not the Droid DNA's strong suit. So in really nice lighting, as you guys can see here, it's not so bad, but a lot of the highlights on his face you can see are just getting totally blown out, and the audio just really does not sound particularly good. The camera software is generally quite good. It's not as intuitive as Android 4.2, however you have quite a few manual options for ISO, exposure, and more. There are also some effects you can choose from, including a fun little distortion effect which you can play around with, dots which render the image in a series of interesting looking dots, and finally your standard depth of field, vignette, and Instagram-like filters. Powering the HTC Droid DNA is a Snapdragon S4 quad-core processor clocked at 1.5GHz, paired with 2GB of RAM and Adreno 320 graphics. This is the same combo you'll find in the Nexus 4, and it delivers some of the best performance in any smartphone available right now. It has plenty of power to push around all the pixels on that 1080p screen, however some games aren't updated to work on the DNA just yet. You'll also find 16GB of storage built in, which is about average, however the lack of a micro SD card slot is a bit disappointing. Call quality on the Verizon network is top notch, rivaling Motorola phones like the Droid Razor HD. You'll also get solid LTE data speeds topping 30 megabits per second at times, and even pulling in over 10 megabits in my office where most Verizon phones struggle. With a 5-inch 1080p screen and quad-core processor running off a 2020mAh battery, I was skeptical of the battery life, but in my testing I found I was easily able to make it through a full day of use and then some. The HTC Droid DNA has some faults. The hardware is well built, but a few design choices hold the phone back. It's great to see Android 4.1 on board, but Sense is really in need of a redesign. That said, you're getting the best display on any phone out there and top-notch specs all for a reasonable price. 
If you're looking to pick up a new phone on Verizon, the Droid DNA is absolutely worth a look.